Well, I'll tell you this, uh, Seach. I mean, no, nobody, to use Kevin's words, nobody's getting out of tech with the tenure at 153. The only scenario which we saw the entire time of, of you know, forced uh, sell or, um, you know, reorganizing the portfolio is if rates started to rise, okay, maybe growth stocks like tech aren't going to do as well. But I just said we started the show, NASDAQ hits another record high. Why? Because the tenure is not moving. And even when it does show signs of moving, it falls right back for a variety of reasons, which we just discussed at the top of the program, too. So it, it, it's not just because of rates, Scott, though. It's because these quality tech companies are the new defense. No, for sure. Look, for sure. But you know what I mean. You, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I do. So if you look at what's happening in, in, in Europe, I mean, markets are paying attention to, to these COVID stats, right? Interest rates are down. Oil is down. Dollar strong. NASDAQ's on top again. Value and cyclicals are taking a back seat. Um, you know, we would agree with Tom. It's a temporary setback. How much markets pay attention to this? It, it, it's really dependent on how it plays out, right? The mo more it plays out negatively, the more markets are going to pay attention, and the value cyclicals will continue to take a back seat. But that said, the economy is incredibly strong, and there's a lot of tailwinds out there. You know, housing starts were lower than expected, but new b building permits were up. That indicates strong underlying demand. If you look at inventory to sales, inventories need to be re rebuilt. Supply chain uh, constraints easing, that's going to increase growth. And I know, by the way, this country has underinvested in CapEx for 10 years. And, you know, you look at firms like Goldman and you just look at the data, they're saying there's going to be 60 trillion in CapEx globally next year. What do you think that does for the economy? Well, it's an incredible tailwind. So if we get something that I uh, that I would say is a, a bit of a COVID shock to the system, which I think is highly unlikely, by the way, that it, it, that, it, that it's uh, it's too significant, it's a dip to buy. The other thing that I would say that markets are not paying enough attention to is, and I, and I don't think it's a high probability outcome, which is why we're not as focused on it, but if, if Leo Brainerd gets in, everybody's saying, why is that bad? She's more dovish. Let me tell you why that's not a good outcome. Because at the end of the day, we're delaying what's inevitable. There is inflation. The Fed has told you, not in precise words, but they're changing policy there behind the curve. She is going to revert that policy and, and, and push back the, uh, the hiking of rates. And therefore, she's going to have to slam on the brakes very, very hard when that happens. And you risk a car crash. I, I, I would rather be practical and stick with who brought us to the dance, as Kevin said, because, you know, some of these other uh, other things create uncertainty that create unintended long-term risk to what is a very positive economic trajectory. So